So I'm just making, I've just making notes now of um, a duck's head on the stone above in front of me. Um, now I'm actually st stood in the floodplain from when the ice melted, when the ice sheet melted. Um, and again, like the Dove Stone, which is up that way, going towards the Nick of Pendle. Um, obviously, these are the tribal... The, the sun's above my head now. These are the tribal stones. These are the indigenous of the UK. Um, and it's their codes. It's their coded system. I'm not going to walk across there because it's very boggy and I don't fancy getting covered in shit um, but I just wanted to show the duck on the stone now looking at it it looks quite a big stone like a cover stone you know a burial cover stone um, and obviously the white the white lichen is showing the duck. Um, so whether the stone's been worked at some point, and these are the tribal codes, um, it's in the it's in with the the rocks of the duck chamber. Um, I've noticed quite a few marks. On the rocks, I don't know whether they're cup rings, cup marks, um, quarried marks, but there's a lot of light, white lichen. Now, there's also quite a few, quite a few interesting marks. I don't know what they are. Um, interesting stone here. I don't want to ring it. Um, at this point, I don't want to wait the dead today, I'm not in the mood. But you can see the duck, it's quite, quite clear. Um, they, must be, they just must be coded stones. Somebody at some point in the past have left us birds. And if, if it is a work stone, then I would say, from an artist's point of view, that's a pretty clever stone. You know, the artwork on that stone, it is a duck. It's a white duck. It's a goose. It's a gander. The goose and the gander. And it is uh, in line with the the solar ring, what sits upon the, t the top of the hill. We've got Pendle Witch there, we've got Stabden. See where the, the, the miners have been and they've dug it all out. Luckily they haven't got to this part yet, but they will do. They've invented the machine so it won't take them long. You know they don't have to rely on the arson trap anymore, do they? Which is sad. Incidentally, the in the distance there, just above my finger, there's a little farm and above that is the small wind turbine. That is where Cromwell hid out in the King's Forest. The King's Forest being that. And this descends then down to Warley Spring Woods. 
So I should imagine there's been quite quite a lot of slaughter around here. Slaughter under trust as it were. But these definitely are our indigenous ancestors. And it's interesting to make a recording of that fact. Um, I'm not sh sure if anybody's made any... See the cup rings. The cup marks. This could be... Um, looking at it, something, something tribal obviously. And for now it's still here, it's still here for people to um, contemplate and have quiet moments. Three nice stones there. triangular formation hunter gatherers perhaps um, is it more than hunter gathering I mean they've hunted and gathered the stones down there but there's still quite a few interesting stones left to decipher the codes we know Stonehenge, we know Stonehenge had found quite a few duck stones. Is there a connection with, the, with these, the ancestors who built Stonehenge? Cousins, obviously. I think that's what I'm trying to get, get at. Um, Beautiful lichen, beautiful lichen of every colour. I can see a smiley face, two eyes and a mouth. But that's just me seeing it from an artist's viewpoint. colours of the stones are so natural. And Anna, if you're watching this, just so peaceful, just so peaceful. Um, and it's not only peaceful, it's, it's our heritage, darling. While I've been, um, I remark, while I've been filming this, less than a quarter of a mile here, we've got guns going off, shooting the wildlife and I find it sad because these aren't these aren't the people that look after nature as far as I'm concerned Did and it always will do. Nice split stone. And we're walking now down to the eagle. Not the eagle, the duck. I'm calling it the duck. Um,
you know, you get a, quite a peaceful feeling walking amongst the stones. It's an incredible feeling. Now, if I remember rightly, this is actually the dog. Oh, that could be it, actually. Um, I'll show you where I mean on my Google map. You know, you see it quite clear, clear when you're viewing it from Google map and then when you're actually here, um, it's quite hard to see. But I think that's it. I think this is it. I think that is the duck. So the split stone, we've got the split stone and then we've got the duck. So that would in fact be the head and that's the belly and that's the duck. It's incredible. And our, our ancestors left us the marks. They left us the marks of the duck. So that is the eye of the duck. There. This is the beak. The head. This is the body. I'm stood. I'm basically stood in the belly now of the duck. And there's the split stone. And there's the eggs. The eggs are separated from the... Um, I mean, it could be its tail, but there has to be an egg stone. The egg stone is the capstone there in front of me, of course. How oh, clever. So the white duck on the stone there is a marker stone. It's the marker stone of the chamber. And I should imagine if I was up, up viewing that stone now, I suppose I could walk up there. I've done enough walking, I've got to walk back yet. Um, so I'm stood on the dock. So this, this line of stones here, it is 166 feet, Anna. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. You can see the blue stones. There's the blue stone triangle there. Or it could be a Y. Or a Triskeel even. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And we've got the blue capstone. Is it a burial chamber? I'm not sure. It could be just a piece of lead stone. But it certainly warrants investigation, I think. It certainly doesn't warrant people coming and just you know, discarding the stones. These were the Ice Age warriors. These were the survivors of the Storga Slide. These were the ancestors of the indigenous Um, I keep finding raven feathers. These were the ancestors of the last Atlantic race, what I call them. And these were the, these were the codes. see where the quarrying has been taking place. I 
I think that track going up there, that's just a sheep track. I think that's where the wild, the wild sheep go. But definitely quarry marks. Which is sad. Very sad. I think that's the sheep track, isn't it? It's where sheep walk. So. Interesting. To some, not to others. got to be at least three and a half thousand years old. Has to be. You can see where they've been splitting the rock. Have they split it or is it natural? I think I don't think that side matches up with that side. Oh it's a heart. <laughs> you can see. So there's the heart and there's the duck. It's a cold. There's the cold. There's the duck. And the duck, Bill, <laughs> plotting my house. <laughs> and we've got our lines. Oops. We've got our lines and we've got our dots. Lines and dots. So anybody watching this from Australia, you can see the ancestors' codes reminding us of the dot and the dash. My tribal people, my tribal warriors. My tribal warriors have left me the codes. But you have to walk round the stones to see the to, you've got to walk the stones, you've got to walk the stones, you've got to spend time with the ancestors. You've got to spend time with the ancestors and just sit. Just sit with the marks. You've got to sit with the marks and appreciate the code of the ancestors, the dots. See the arrow? That's all I know I'm with my ancestors. So I will leave it here and report back another day.